LendingTree recently did a survey of 2,000 homeowners, and 44% of them expected a housing crash in 2024. And 36% of them actually wanted a housing crash to happen because they thought it would lower their property taxes and lead to economic stability. That is very alarming. Now, I understand that higher property values will mean higher property taxes, and we have seen a significant rise in home values during the pandemic buying frenzy. Now, over the last several years, the term housing crash has been thrown around, and I think for the most part, Many people have lost touch with what it really means. A true housing crash will do a lot more than lowering property values. A true housing crash will impact every aspect of the economy. So if you're one of the ones who are praying for a housing crash or expecting a housing crash, let's talk a little bit about what a housing crash actually looks like to find out whether or not that's something you really want to see happen or if it's something that has any remote possibility of even happening. I think we can agree that a true housing crash starts with a large number of foreclosures. But before that happens, there's going to be a large number of layoffs, which is going to lead to a higher unemployment rate. If a homeowner loses their job and can no longer afford the mortgage payments, the bank is going to foreclose on that house. It is a long process, but at the end of it, the bank takes the house back and then sells it to pay off the loan balance. Now, a bank is not in the real estate investing business, so they are not concerned with selling that house at a profit. All they want is to recover the amount that's still owed on the loan, which usually means the house is going to sell for below market value. Now, if enough of these foreclosed homes are selling at less than market value, it will impact the home values of all the other homes in the area. Here's a simple example. If there are only one or two foreclosures in a given area and 20 non-foreclosures, after those two foreclosures sell below market value, those remaining homes will adjust back closer to the original market value. On the other hand though, if there are 20 foreclosures and only a handful of non-foreclosures, as more and more of those foreclosures sell at less than market value, they will begin to establish a lower market value for all the other homes in the area. So for a true market crash to happen, a lot of people are going to need to lose their jobs and they're going to need to lose their homes. And don't forget, one of them could be you. But even if you are able to keep your job and manage to continue to make your mortgage payments, you could find yourself in a position where you owe more than that house is worth based on the new market value established after all those foreclosure sales. Now, I know that a lot of you watch some of those YouTubers who would literally say anything just to get you to watch their videos. I'm talking about the ones who say the Federal Reserve doesn't know what they're doing or that a market crash worse than 2008 is right around the corner or that builders are building way too many houses and they're all gonna go bankrupt, or any of the other gloom and doom topics that are designed to grab your attention. If I were to tell you that foreclosures are at their highest rate in the last three years, that would probably get your attention. But if I showed you the whole chart, you could easily see that the number of foreclosures are nowhere close to where they were in 08 and 09. And the rate of increase is substantially less than the years leading up to the 2008 crash. The primary reason they were so low here is there was a moratorium on foreclosures during the pandemic and everybody who was buying anything back then completely lost their minds. They bought anything that was listed for sale and overpaid for almost everything that they bought. I make these videos to provide information to help you make better decisions when you're buying or selling real estate. But the only way I'll know is if you like them or if you find them useful is if you like the video, leave a comment, or subscribe to my channel. Also, if you think about buying or selling real estate here in the Austin area, I would love to help you out. Just shoot me a text or email or schedule a phone call on the YouTube channel page. But enough about that. Let's talk about some of the things that are going on in the current market and see if there's anything that might suggest that a housing crash might happen anytime in the foreseeable future. Now, as we talked about before, high unemployment and a large number of foreclosures usually are the first signs that a housing crash might be on the horizon but we haven't seen either of those. When the Federal Reserve first started raising interest rates almost two years ago, many economists and experts were predicting that they were going to cause a recession, which usually leads to higher unemployment. Well, that didn't happen because just about everybody except the Federal Reserve underestimated how strong the economy was. In their most recent meeting this month, the Federal Reserve decided to keep interest rates steady and are forecasting a 75 basis point reduction in 2024. After that announcement, the stock market took off like a rocket because everyone expects that when those interest rates start to come down, the boom is going to be back on. Now, this type of optimism is great for consumer spending because when people feel more confident about the future, they become more likely to purchase high ticket items like houses. So if the Federal Reserve has been successful in bringing inflation down and we're at the end of these rate increases and we'll likely see reductions sometime in 2024, 
we may have avoided a recession completely. And if there is no recession, that means we're not going to see the spike in unemployment or foreclosures. But is there anything else out there that might cause a housing crash in 2024? Well, with the exception of something that's totally unexpected, like COVID, which completely shut down the economy and pushed us into a recession, with the exception of something like that happening, there is nothing else out there that indicates that we're anywhere close to a slowdown, let alone a crash. Now, you might point to high home prices in the Austin metro, but they have been adjusting for over two years now. This is the most recent report from the Austin Board of Realtors that showed that the median price in the Austin metro in November of 2023 was 424000 it spiked to 470 in November of 2021, but in November of 2020, just before the price run-ups, it was 365,000, which is a 16% increase in two years. Now that's high, but it's nowhere close to the 30% increase we saw between 2020 and 2021. In other words, if you're praying for a market crash or any kind of significant decrease in home values, you may have already missed it. Now, there are some areas of the Austin Metro that may see continued price reductions in 2024, particularly those on the higher end of the price spectrum. Based on the number of sales in any given month, there are far too many listings in some areas at higher price points to have any kind of reasonable expectation that all of those houses are going to sell for as much as the seller thinks those houses are worth. If you want to learn more about the Austin housing market, this video examines whether or not it's really as bad as a lot of people want you to believe it is. And don't forget to subscribe to my channel and ring the bell. That way you'll get a notification every time I post a new video.